uh, I'm so excited, I would say. Um, respect the chief uh, guests and respect the DG of NIMA, um, distinguished guests and officers, and ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is my first trip to Pakistan, which I'm longing for, for a long time ago. Um, I'm great honored to be here, an exciting meeting, and I meet a lot of nice person and uh, wonderful experts. Um, here, I'm gonna um, take uh, the, you know, uh, I'm not alone. I will uh, be on half of my uh, whole group to uh, share our knowledge and the lessons we have learned from Chinese uh, uh, rivers and coasts to talking about the sustainability of rivers and coasts and their links to the blue economy. Hope uh, we can share those uh, uh, knowledge together. Uh, I will not repeat why the blue economy means a lot for the uh, developing country because we have learned a lot from uh, yesterday's lecture and also today's. Uh, but as a oceanographer, I would love to remind all of us to think about one uh, uh, important issue when we are considering the development, we always have to think about how to make the balance between the development and uh, uh, the sustainability sustainable of the resources in the oceans. And the figures just showed, uh, based on the most recent review, the literature they uh, uh, conducted 10 years, uh, you know, uh, aesthetic analysis, they showed the SDG goals as I most uh, uh, people live, uh, sit in this room has uh, uh, listened these words of several times. It's kind of, you know, UN uh, uh, decade of uh, um, uh, oceans uh, Im implementation plan has been launched since uh, 2021, which aims to, you know, make uh, the uh, ocean health and the sustainability. Uh, also could be the top priority task for the, um, for the older ocean, um, ocean nations research uh, in the coming 10 years. So they, they found there's a great link between the SDG goals and uh, uh, the blue economy tasks. So which means we have to be very careful for this kind of issue. So the most uh, uh, linked issue will be uh, target uh, uh, 17, 14, 12, and 15. So which, if we ex uh, explain a little more, the world will be linked to the life on the water and the life on the, uh, on the terrestrial environment, uh, which obviously is linked to our topic today. Uh, we have learned a lot, even um, benefit for the uh, uh, Senate's talks. And she mentioned that uh, the coastal system is really uh, vulnerable for all kinds of you know, stresses, including the climatic change, sea rise, and uh, also the anthropogenic disturb. So we could say there's a there are serious uh, ecological risk that has to be interfered for our systems. So there's a two plots. The left plot just give you the information about uh, eutrophication and uh, uh, hypoxia has observed in the Asia region. So we are ashamed that Shanghai, um, the Chinese coastal system has a lot of dots and uh, that means they have a kind of a uh, serious problem. We have uh, less dots around uh, in the uh, in, along the Pakistan coastline at this moment, but I maybe need more efforts to to make sure and elucidate. So the ref, the right um, picture just give the ideas about the red tide events observed in the last ten years. You will see so many you know circles represented independent events in each year, and they are covering the most coastal regions which will interfere our ecosystem health very, very much. So the um, review paper just elucidated that eutrophication in the coastal region become a big issue. And almost over 20% area of the coastal region has been definitely 
affected by the eutrophication. Uh, major region is the, uh, about the nitrogen enrichment in these systems. So those uh, nitrogen most uh, derived from the uh, terrestrial environment through the river system. So I will uh, give uh, the more detailed information one by one uh, later. And uh, the additional sources uh, besides the uh, river and road will be atmospheric deposition and also the SGD, the submarine groundwater discharges. Uh, Yellow River is the most uh, northern large river in China, so they are also quite a highly dense the region. And uh, uh, the picture on the left side it just gives you the idea about uh, the you know the the neutron uh, loads and their forms uh, in the past uh, 18 years. So uh, based on this kind of long, uh, long term records, we can notice that uh, since 2012, we setting the very strict legacy in the, uh, in, in the, on the land. So that's why you see the kind of a sharp decline of neutron load in the river. But uh, if you notice the, the last uh, uh, Last picture on the bottom. So they, they notice the DOP, the organic uh, phase of the phos phosphorus just uh, you know, increase in the different trends. And uh, the right picture to give you about the algae bloom um, uh, eutrophication event record in the Bohai, that's the Jensen Sea, um, you know, beside the Yellow Sea. But you see, they are not uh, coupling. That means the river line road is uh, decreasing, but uh, you couldn't see the eutrophication event records decreasing as in trends. So, which means there's a lot of, you know, mechanism or kind of, you know, process still missing and we need to more uh, investigation behind it. Uh, here, that's the uh, example from the uh, Changjiang, uh, maybe people sometimes will call Yans. Um, they are, uh, it's the longest river in China and also famous for the Surgarges Dam built on the upstream so people. So that's why we monitored the system very carefully. We uh, carried out the several, uh, you know, uh, basin scales investigation. Uh, that's the plots uh, based on the 40 years records. And uh, on the right panel, you will see the time. A high resolution time series data we collect in the downstream of the river, which give you the based on the monthly data to evaluate the signal more properly. Uh, the purpose is uh, we just try to divide the signal of the climate change into the, um, uh, you know, um, into uh, to divide in, uh, to beside the, um, as a potential disturb. So we will see uh, the nitrogen load has uh, increased almost five to f uh, four to five folds in 40 years, and the phosphorus even, even severe will be eight folds. But uh, the dam effect seems not so significant interfere the silica, uh, uh, silica case. And uh, we just calculated the, how the uh, sub-region of the basin to interfere the different uh, nutrients uh, of loading. And we found uh, for the most uh, highly dense uh, urbanization processed uh, region, the, the uh, Yant Delta, they found they only contributed 5% of the whole ginger basin, but contributed 20% DIP, the phosphorus load in the whole systems, which means urbanization could play a very significant role in, you know, in, in such kind of uh, river and, uh, nitrogen loadings estimations, which is ignored in the previous studies. And the statistical analysis also elucidated the there's a very limited role in climate change effect. And the major roles is become from the land use change and also the, um, the, uh, the urbanization uh, processes. Um, last case is, uh, that's the most southern river, which is close to Guangzhou. I guess um, some Pakistan and colleagues have been visited there. Uh, so there's a, a Kupur River. And there are also similar uh, case in the Yans, uh, a highly eutrophicated inference for the whole estuary. 
Um, as I mentioned in the uh, few slides ago, the SGD play a kind of important role. It's uh, um, it's kind of you know new studies carried. Uh, it's not really really new already. So almost uh, twenty years, twenty years going already. So we found uh, uh, besides the riverine road, uh, SGD plays a more and a more important uh, role for the riverine uh, nutrients loading. Uh, according to the uh, review paper published just recently, they elucidated uh, based on uh, uh, their observation, almost 60% uh, of the worldwide coastline, the SGD load is even bigger than rivers. And especially, they have a special form of their nutrients patterns, just like they will have enriched in ammonium and uh, organic uh, nutrients, which are more, um, you know, more distinguished uh, impact on the uh, aquatic systems. So, based on those knowledge, we will say kind of you know um, action, urgent action must be taken to reduce those uh, nutrients loading from the terrestrial environment into the ocean. But before we, uh, you know, design such kind of management, we should uh, uh, keep one, you know. One thing very clearly, um, in long term, we simply use the uh, single system nutrient control um, you no know, discipline, but it will be not really work well. So the four plots uh, uh, we presented here is the nice paper published in Science by the American. I think it's American scientist. They mentioned uh, that's the normal case. You will observe the the phosphorus um, uh, limitation in the riverside, and you will see the nitrogen limitation in offshore region. But uh, if they have the different uh, ecological risks, just uh, pay attention. The bottom, the hypoxia events uh, happen in the different position, means you have to take the different uh, regulation of nutrient control, uh, nutrient c control um, actions later. So, which means a more detailed and the decent study should be uh, carried out. I briefly discussed with Samina about the Indus Delta issue, uh, more or less uh, adopt to the uh, case three, which means the nitrogen load should be uh, careful uh, controlled uh, in Pakistan um, Pakistan systems. Uh, I will um, take a kind of a nice exam, um, nice examples, but uh, unfortunately adopted to the lake system. How they, uh, um, you know, design a kind of special technology to um, to prevent or to control the uh, this kind of eutrophic, uh, eutrophication risks. So they applied uh, a kind of exper experiments in the Taihu Lake, which is located in the downstreams of the uh, Delta region of the Yans. Uh, there's a there's a nice place, and uh, but um, unfortunately they have a very severe cyanobacteria bloom every spring and uh, uh, summertime. Uh, they, but uh, the scientists they are smart enough. They they changed those cyanobacteria, um, you know, to to into the uh, carbon hydrate rich material. Then fermented them, and uh, later they produced the ethanol, which are kind of a bio refinery raw material. So could it be a kind of you know idea a way to you know develop a new technology to uh, reduce such kind of risk. Um, I guess my time is limited, so I would just you know, go directly to say uh, this kind of eutrophication cannot be avoided, and especially coupling with the climate change, uh, obviously they were going with us for at least decades. So the solution and protocols should be definitely you know, designed and managed, and to, in, to maintain the system and the sustainability of those systems also will be very helpful for our blue economy. And there are several protocols I would love to share here. The first is the more strict legacy about the terrestrial nutrient pollutants release. And the second is give the, you know, restored the coastal wetlands and the mushroom ecosystems uh, ecological values and uh, make they, they are more valuable for filtration and uh, preventing 
so make it our coastline more healthy. And the third one is uh, um, we should remember the, those rivers is also kind of a nursery grounds for uh, those love shrimps and the fisheries. So we have to guarantee they are well functioned and to make the, their nursery and then migration easy and free. Uh, the last one we always have to um, remember and also what my more closely linked to the blue economy development, because I guess uh, similar as the, in the Chinese uh, uh, coastline will be happened uh, also in the Pakistan coastline. There's a lot of new projects going on because uh, in China, I think uh, recently we have a lot of uh, wind, uh, marine wind power construction on the coastline, but I guess there's the ecological risk is not really well uh, evaluated at the moment. Uh, finally, I will not uh, repeat the sentence that I've shown in the slides, but I would love to share the address. Uh, I will cite the address uh, about uh, from our uh, chairman, uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, he has uh, mentioned the, the, lucid monk, uh, the lucid water and the, um, the lush um, mountain uh, means invalid assets in Chinese will be uh, so that's kind of a way to convince us sustainable, um, sustainably of the rivers and coasts means a lot for the human beings, also for the blue economy. We have to work together to, uh, for our better future. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.